Rory McIlroy golf has been out for over a week. So no better time than now to bring in our resident golf expert, Polygon's Mr. Owen Good, to join us for a conversation about Rory McIlroy PGA Tour Golf. Owen, how are you, my friend? I'm doing great, Rich. Thanks for having me on. So um, let's just start, before we get into sort of what the current situation is with Rory McIlroy. Owen, just give me, uh, we, we haven't had a chance to talk to you about Rory McIlroy Golf. What, what are your... You know, what's your overall uh, overall thought on Rory McIlroy now that you've had it in your hands for about a week? Well, if, my overall thought is <clears throat> they have a game they have a, a gameplay engine that um, makes some needed changes. They're they're somewhat subtle, but it is a, a clean and smooth playing game of golf. Um, I do enjoy it when I am thinking about you know the shot that I'm making, and I I try to play it at a, at a more advanced. Um, uh, you know, level with the assist turn off and things like that. I think at the lower levels, it can be a little too easy to just dial in the coordinates, which is a problem that this game has had through the years. But at higher levels, you know, there is some thought that has to go into it. I think the thing that I like most about the gameplay is the putting, which has in years past really suffered from a difficulty spike, which is either <clears throat> it babies you, it gives you the putt preview. Um, you know, where it gives you a putt preview that fades or a putt preview window that's permanent or or you're just completely on your own and only through, like, a lot of play and trial and error do you figure out how far behind the hole you need to hit it, you know, what your break is, that sort of thing. Now I like the the ideal break line that, that sort of gives you a starting point, and that's all I've ever really asked for with this game. Um, I think Tiger Woods 12 had... A, a, a sort of a starting point mechanism, which is like focus, and then it, it gave you a circle, and you were going to put it somewhere in there, and then you sort of figured out how to hit it from there. I like I like the uh, I like the break line is what I mean to say, and and it's not always like you know figure out where on the grid and then move it to the steepest part of the break. If you've got like you know a hill that's between you and the cup, you have to factor into the speed that gets you over that hill, and then how am I break? off of that. It still leaves an element of determination into that, and I think that that's probably where the game shines the most is it, it makes your second shot so much more important to be accurate with that as opposed to in, in years past, and I think even, you know, its predecessor, and we'll talk about its predecessor a lot, I'm sure, um, you could get away with a lot of really sloppy approach shots um, because, you know, it, the putting was a, was a little bit easier, and here I think it's a little bit more of a re reasonable challenge. One thing that I'm, I'm just chagrined that I noticed so late, but I was wondering, I was like, why is my shot doing this? And I realized that the strike meter that they have, it doesn't properly invert. When you move the target to the top of the ball, you're actually putting more loft on the ball. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, everybody that was laughing at me was like, you know, early on in, in, in this process, and I'm complaining about how the hell do I get out of this bunker at TPC Boston? And it's because I was telling the ball, I was telling the thing to literally hit the top of the ball, and I thought I was aiming at the bottom of it. <laughs> yeah. And it's 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 a strike meter that, when you think about it, it mirrors the golf clubs when you're modifying your shot. You know, when you lay the trigger down and then you move the stick, and except the golf club doesn't put a ball on there to disorient you and make you think that's the part of the ball that you're hitting. So they need to work on that. Mm. Um, you know, that's that's just sort of a what. Kind of, kind of thing there, but it's not fatal. It's just, I guess, a question of, I, well, I don't know that it's not fatal. I don't design video games or develop them. Um, but that's the gameplay. The, the visuals, while they, I think presentationally, you have something that looks a lot more like a television broadcast. You also have a lot of repetition in some of those scenes. The courses don't get a real showcase of their visual beauty because you have like three times a day and no weather change. And then you get to the instance, and I was playing on Xbox One. I don't know what you guys are playing on. Um, there is a lot of course pop in. Some things oh, yeah, oh, yeah. just really jar you and take you out of it and make you go, this is what we were waiting for. And I understand that this is a first stab at this game, especially with the new engine and an engine that was created for a first-person shooter. Um, but that's their problem, not mine. Uh, it, it That's... You know, this is not something that I really expected. And as I mentioned in my review, for the for the number for the quantity of features, sundry and large, 
that had been left out of this game, you would need a game that was groundbreaking in its gameplay and its visuals to justify their absence. And then you go, okay, well, this is the platform of the future. And yes, Tiger Woods 06 had, or 07 had only six courses or whatever. I might have that backwards. And, and you know, we'll see about more stuff coming in in the future. But it isn't like that. It's a, it's a clean playing game of golf. The thing with the strike meter notwithstanding, love the short game. Love how relevant that the course becomes when they render the whole thing and now you don't have these weird out of bounds scenarios that you know take you out of your shot even though it might not land out of bounds they have to do it that way because they can't render anything beyond a certain point um, I think the course plays truer I think you get truer lies in you know bad ball situations like you know the sand traps and, and roughs and areas around the green and things like that but absence of features and the absence really of anything compelling in this next to its siblings or if you want to call them cousins you know from from two years ago is just stark and it's very disappointing and I'm, I'm sitting up here and I'm going you know do I want to play Rory McIlroy PGA Tour tonight you know or do I want to play Batman and in the old days I would be surrendering, you know, large swaths of my time to to this to the Tiger Woods series, but to EA Sports' golf franchise for weeks after after release. And you know, you've got eight courses, eight real world eight real world courses, a career that does not feel like a career at all. Won't even expose you your schedule. Won't even show you what you're playing next. Um, just feels like one event after another. And, and I just go, I feel like I've seen, I've already seen everything this game has to offer. And therein uh, lies the rub, uh, Ryan Weedai, is that EA has said there's more coming. Um, everybody that I've spoken to, whether they like the game or not, wants more of it. Even when producer Ryan Farwarda was on the Press Row podcast this past week, he even said... You know, we wish there was more, and yet there is no communication on what that more is. Brian Weedai, what is going to happen with this franchise uh, now that it's there and released and is in a state of, I don't want to say limbo, but in certainly in one of the more precarious states of any major franchise being released that I can ever remember? Yeah, I think we all agreed that... Uh, McElroy is a decently fun game, but how far that fun extends is really limited by a, you know, a poor career mode, poor online play, uh, and just the lack of courses and the lack of golfers. So when everyone found out about the information, you know, the, the eight courses and the, the 12 golfers, and then you, know, you have some fantasy courses in there also, the question was, how are they going to support this game? Because uh, we, we have a recent example. We have two recent examples, really. Uh, NHL 15, which which released with the very disappointing features list, and they EA came out prior to release and said, okay, here's our plan going forward. Here's all the stuff we're going to be adding in September, in October. Just, just prior to release, but yes, prior yeah. to oh, release. Oh, yeah. No, they, they don't get a lot of credit from me for that, but they did lay out their post-release plans, right? Yes. And then EA Sports UFC, which released and was... You know, not received real well in terms of gameplay, and they they continued to update that over the months, and then also a kind of a lackluster roster which they added to for nine months really. So they they do have a track record now of supporting these games post release, even though they're not going to be necessarily making a bunch of money off of them. They they have come out and said we're going to have post release content. We're going to have content. It's Some of it's going to be free. That's all we know. We don't know when it's coming. We don't know what it's going to be. We don't know what's going to end up being charged for because inevitably with this series, they have to charge for, for courses. It's a very different situation than UFC and adding fighters who are already under their UFC license. Here they have to pay for any individual golfer they sign. They have to sign them individually. Here they have to build courses and get the license for those courses, not free. You know, they weren't adding, uh, I said this in the last show, they weren't adding you know, arenas to UFC. That's you know, something comparable of that nature that involves a ton of work. 
So we have to see where we're going to go with this. But as of now, they haven't said anything really specifically that they have to live up to. So no one should be buying the game on the basis of, oh, I'm not worried. They're going to add a bunch of stuff, and it's going to be free, and then the game's going to be awesome in six months. We don't know that. EA doesn't have to live up to that. They haven't made that promise. Uh, ultimately, it will affect, obviously, how the, the franchise goes forward and, and consumer trust in them and, and whether they can launch another game in a few years, if that is their plan. If, uh, uh, so, if I'm not mistaken, TPC Scottsdale is like the only downloadable course that they have announced or yeah. made it into. And that was yeah. the quarter bonus. And it comes to everybody else in September or something, right? Yeah, that's the only thing we know because there is the box uh, on the menus for, uh, for McElroy that says... TPC Scottsdale coming September 14th, something like that. Yeah. And that's for people who didn't pre-order. But that's it. We don't know anything else about any courses they're planning to add, how much they're going to charge for them, what's going to be free, are they going to improve gameplay, are they going to uh, improve career mode, which is really lackluster like like we've talked about. Uh, we don't know. We don't know what they're, they're going to do with it. So we can't really rely on just, well, they've improved these other games. It, it's really not a... Uh, necessarily a completely comparable situation to those, but I, I do expect them to support the game. But what you know is anyone's guess at this point. And so, the other thing I'd say, the other thing I'd say there too is this is a little. This is not like NHL um, uh, 14, which or 15, which was you know supporting a single game. I mean, this is something that is undated, basically. I mean, it, how long is this going to be with us? Two yeah. years, three. Uh, so you know. It, we really need to start hearing their plan for that. So, and and therein again lies lies the confusion. I don't think anybody, if if we knew what the roadmap is, would be as concerned, right? I mean, well, let me say this, Rich. Like, if EA had some really grand plans for this game coming up, and they're going to add a bunch of free courses or something in in August or September. Like, they would have said that. They would have said it by mm -hmm. now. You would think, logically, they would have said that by now because they lost a bunch of people at release from buying the game simply because it didn't have a lot of courses. I mean, this was a huge point of contention leading up to release. People saying they weren't going to buy it because of that. People playing on EA Access saying there's just not enough there. I'm not going to buy it. A lot of people passed on it. and Maybe they come back down the line if this stuff gets added in. But if they had all these bullets in, in, in their gun that uh, for, for McElroy in the next month or two, they would have used them by now, I think. I, I, you just don't wait. It's just like NHL. Last year, they had that stuff mapped out for people because they said, hey, you're, if, you, if you buy the game, we're going to give you this stuff. We want you to buy the game still on day one. But without it, you, know, you don't really know where they're going to go right now, and you can't put your trust in just, just buying the product thinking they're adding that stuff. All right, so Owen, you mentioned this earlier, right? Um, you would, and we've talked about it on on the show, you know, quite a bit in the past. You know, for we all have our sort of the games that uh, grab us in particular, right? In, in years past, it was Tiger Woods. So, what would have to happen for Rory McIlroy to sort of bring you back in? in a fashion similar to the ways that Tiger Woods did in the years past. Is it, is it simply, you know, Augusta? Is it more courses? Is it more golfers? Is it additional um, aspects to the existing modes, the career mode and the online mode? Is it new modes? What, what is it, do you think, um, or what are those different things that would, it, would, it would take to to turn Rory McIlroy into something that would personally appeal to you in the ways that other EA uh, PGA Tour games have in years past? Well, I think the course variety is really the linchpin to the whole thing here, and unfortunately that would have to be something that takes time. Unless they have all of this stuff, you know, hiding out somewhere and they've, you know, they've had the license, you know, they've had the license to Pebble Beach going back to like 1997 or something. It's been in every on the game on the disc you know, even before the Tiger Woods brand, you know, so it's like, you do, did did that deal expire and they just said, okay, the hell with it, we're not the most popular, you know, courses in our game again? I mean, I don't know what happened there, um, but the, you, you, the course variety, not only that, I mean, the, course, the courses that they've selected, how many of those courses in there are ones that really, like, sell a golf game to, 
you know, to the video game to golf fans. I mean, St. Andrews, you know, maybe. I mean, you, you know, they have Chambers Bay, which is the yep. site of a major this year, but yep. you know, that's the first time it's ever gone up there. Uh, yep. You know, there's not there's not Pinehurst, there's not um, Oakmont, there's not uh, uh, Atlanta Athletic Club or East Lake, there's not you know Beth Page Black. There's not a yep. lot of these recognizable places around the country. Um, you know, you got Wolf Creek. You got Whistling Straits. I mean, those are interesting courses, but they're kind of novelties. So what what I would say is, it was like, I want a deeper career. I want something that's a little bit more meaningful in the career. But that depends on having more courses. You can live without licensed events. I mean, I don't really care about that. But you know, it's nice to have them when you do. Um, but but you also, if you have more courses, then you have you know more replay in your multiplayer. You know, then you have more tournaments, online tournaments, and 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 things to do with friends that are online. I mean, let's not forget. I know that people are probably going to roll their eyes. I was a big user of the country club feature. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed that. Yes, me too. Um, and there's and a lot I, of people who did. Yeah. Yeah, and and I don't know what it was in their telemetry that said, you know, hey, this really isn't worth the infrastructure we would commit to it, or we'd have to completely rebuild it in this way. I get that. I mean, obviously, you're talking about an online feature. Or at least you know a, a wrapper for a suite of online uh, you know experiences, but you know that was something that really kept me involved and kept me involved with a lot of friends, even if I wasn't like even if I flatlined or felt like you know my career at the middle point of that second season, you know I had had gone kind of meh because I play four round tournaments by the way, um, you know that's where your replay value is really in this. It's not in things like nightclub. And it's certainly not in things like, you know, you keep coming back to, you know, wetlands. You know, I understand if you're going to build a fantasy course like, you know, Paracel Storm. I understand if you're going to build a fantasy course like Greek Isles from the old series. You know, that's, you know, those things are kind of, of quirky and oddball. They, they went out of their way to build a fantasy course that plays like, you know, a real course. And I respect that. I mean, it's an interesting course. It's you know got some really interesting long par fours in there. But why do that as opposed to you know? Could, did they really not get the money you know to to license? Uh, you know, again, some of these other courses that have been familiar in the game. You know, to San Antonio or uh, uh, Torrey Pines. Um, so it, it's just I think the whole thing breaks down. You know, through the, the the thin course roster, and and you know, Brian, as you said earlier, that's when people really started to flee this, and that is going to take something. That's going to be something that takes a lot of time to recover from. Either they have to build those courses, or they have to figure out a way to parcel them out, such that they can make some money back on them without alienating people. And they're also just, I'm sure, they're huge memory. I'm sure they're a huge memory size. So you know, that, it it's a long road back, but it's got to start with more courses. So, Brian Weed, I, um, as we sort of had the feeling as we got close to uh, release, the Metacritic score for Rory McIlroy is in the low to mid 60s. I 63 believe 63 at the moment, yeah. I believe. 64. So, not disastrous by any stretch, but also not, uh, you know, not where the series has landed in years past. So, with that. As well as with the fact that you know we are five to six weeks away from the start of a almost punishingly oh. packed sports game calendar, um, with no real vision into what may be coming down the line, you know what are the chances that Roy McElroy you know sort of fades in the distance um, versus the chances for it to sort of you know, kind of make a, a strong comeback. Yeah, uh, it's it's going to be difficult because whether it's the five weeks that have like eight or nine sports-related titles that release or beyond that or prior to that where there's some other huge releases that aren't sports-related but it takes people's money because not everybody just plays sports games. There are decisions being made here. What? They don't? I know. Crazy talk. No. So there are decisions being made here with money, this or this, this or this. And so, yeah, McEl McElroy becomes something that maybe people are going to look for Black Friday. Or it almost feels to me like 
this thing, you know, McElroy, does this end up in EA Access after six months like UFC did? Only McElroy has a bunch of DLC courses for them to sell to people, and it becomes almost like quasi uh, free to play, like their first attempt almost at a free to play uh, game uh, on the consoles. If it goes to EA Access after six months, and then they try to sell a bunch of courses to people, that could be Killer Instinct Golf. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, exactly, (laughs) basically the same model. So um, it's going to be tough for them to get any publicity for anything they add. Uh, So. The, the whole idea behind what they've done with this game was kind of to try and attract casuals, whether it you know, was the Battlefield course or the nightclub challenge or the different gameplay styles. They wanted to make this game attractive to casuals. Casuals have a very limited uh, sense of you know, when a game is going to be relevant to them. And if you miss them at, at the beginning... If you miss them when it releases, I think it's it's near impossible to get those people again. Now, the the, the hardcore people, the people who really love golf or uh, purists for the sport, you know, they may be paying attention. But the casual crowd isn't going to pay attention to your press release on you know, four new courses added to Rory McIlroy PGA Tour. It's just not going to work that way. So, so maybe the only way they do attract that is through EA Access or something down the line, uh, where where they bring people in at a lower price. So, Onga, do you think they're going to have the approach of rewarding the early adopters, or do you think ultimately that this is going to be a, you know, the, this is going to be a game that is going to be sort of a little bit here, a little bit there, DLC, DLC, and uh, and really just sort of continue to be an experiment as, uh, you know, as you mentioned before, this is not a numbered annual release. This is this is a platform to one degree or the other. Which, which, what approach do you ultimately think is going to be taken here? Well, they better reward the early adopters. I mean, that would just be atrocious if they, you know, rolled out this at sixty dollars, and then, you know, three months from now they have a pack of three or four courses, and they expect another fifteen of that, you know, mm-hmm. from you. I mean, that that's not going to feed the bulldog. You know, uh, the, I, I'm, I have no idea what their monetization expectations are on this. My hope would be that, again, as this is an, an, a non-numbered, you know, sports series, that it's like, okay, this is going to be a platform. And if you bought in, um, you know, whenever you acquire the physical copy of the game, you will get, you know, all of this class of courses and downloadable content, and then we will still have some premium stuff out there, you know, that, because I recognize that special things do come up, fine. Um, but if they just, you know, lurch anybody who bought this thing day one, I mean, you know, why should anybody do business with, with anyone like that again? And I don't think that, I mean, I really don't think that EA is is that blind or self-unaware you know, to do something like that. I mean, we, we, I am not happy with, Frank, and but this is with the video game industry in general, just any, if anybody's got any kind of a product in development, getting any kind of a forthright answer out of anyone as to what's going into it is just impossible. I mean, you know, look what's going on with Konami right now in Metal Gear, because they're scared out of their mind that they say anything honest about what's going on there, that people will cancel their pre-orders and protest, so... You know, they're waiting for that thing to release in September. And, you know, and then Mark came. They didn't tell us about Augusta until they absolutely had to because they knew that if they were going to say, hey, that deal's expired, because that didn't sneak up on them. That wasn't some car wreck. You know, they knew yeah. if they said straight away that we don't have it, but we're going to have all these other things, people would go, no thanks. They knew that if they said, hey, we've got 12 courses, people said, great, what are they? Well, they're these. And you go, well, I never heard of four of those. And they go, well, that's because they're fake. People go, Poof. See ya. So you know they that I'm not happy with, but the overall idea that they're going to come out there and plunder our wallets, I'm going to give them a little bit of benefit of the doubt on that. But they had really better throw a bone to the people who went in on this because those people were the ones who were buying and playing this, you know, in what will probably be remembered as the glory years of this franchise. Well, as we have seen, um, it is not easy to rebuild a sports franchise um, on new console hardware. You know, NBA Live is, uh, you know, continuing to be a work in progress. 
Uh, Roy McIlroy PGA Tour is a new game in every single way, you know, built from the from the ground up. These are complex, difficult things uh, to do. So, um, you know, unfortunately, um, I think, and I don't know this for a fact, but I think it's probably more difficult than the the than the the teams originally thought. And I think we're sort of seeing the results of that. I also think that. Uh, Rory McIlroy PGA Tour sort of had to come out when it came out. Uh, you know, July was traditionally the time where uh, college football came out. That's out now. You know, it couldn't come out in August or September when you know the FIFA, NHL, Madden, and NBA all come out. So it's it it, it got put in a very strange place, and and, and we're seeing the, the unfortunate results of that. That it, it either wasn't ready or it was ready, but we don't know what the what the true roadmap is. Can I, can I mention something here? I mean, they put this series on hiatus on Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 for a year, specifically to give their team at EA Tiburon two years to build for this generation and not have to build for, you know, uh, old hardware simultaneously. They were going to offload that to HB, the folks who made the golf club, okay? So their plan was you get two full years on this generation only to build this golf game. And this is what we came up with. And I just, it's unacceptable to me. It's hard to argue. And both the critics and the public seem to agree. Rory McIlroy, PJ Tour Golf, uh, while there may be aspects of it that are good, uh, overall, uh, there's a lot less there than I think a lot of people were hoping for.